I want to show you a practical example of how we can use a do loop to validate user input. In this simple program, I'm asking the user to enter their age, which I may do something with later, perhaps perform some calculations with it. So I've declared a couple of variables, stAge as string and iAge as integer. Then I'm prompting the user to type in their age using the input box function, and I'm loading that into the string variable. Once I've captured that, I then convert the string into an integer using the cint function. Finally, I output the age, which is now an integer. Let's see what happens when I run this program. I type in an age, and it works just fine. If, however, the user does something they're not supposed to do, which of course is their job, for example, they type a string, my program has crashed with a type mismatch error. Hitting the debug button reveals that this line has failed. We've attempted to convert something which is not convertible into an integer. This is a string. So how do we get around this problem? Let's reset the program and do something different. I'm going to wrap up the input box line inside a do loop which will keep prompting the user until they enter something that I can convert into an integer. Like this. You may remember the isNumeric function. The isNumeric function tests if something can be converted into a number. It doesn't actually do the conversion, it just asks if it can be converted. So here I'm saying keep prompting until I get something which I can convert. So let's try it now. If I enter a string, it keeps on asking. And it will keep on asking forever until the user types something which can be converted into an integer. And there we go, we finally output what is really an integer. Here's another program which uses the same techniques. And you can also see in this program I've got what's called a nested loop. In other words, a loop within a loop. What this program will do is ask the user how many students' marks they want to check. If I say, for example, I want to check the marks of three students, it will then prompt me three times to enter a mark out of 80 for each student. And for each student, it will then calculate that mark as a percentage and output it. Let's have a little think about how it works. First of all, I'm asking the user how many students' marks they want to check. And you can see I've used the same technique here. I'm capturing the number of students as a string, and I've used a do loop to make sure that the user does indeed enter something which can be converted into an integer. Once I've captured something which can be converted, I then use the cint function to convert that into an integer. So I now know how many students' marks I want to check. Having done that, I have a do loop here where I'm going to prompt that many times. If I've said three students, this loop will run three times. I've got a loop counter here to control my passage through the loop, and you can see I'm going to loop until my counter is equal to the number of students that was entered. This loop starts here, and it finishes here. For each student, then, I'm asking what is the mark. And I've used the same technique again. I will keep prompting until that particular student's mark can be converted into an integer. Enter the mark for this student out of 80. Notice as well I've said type minus 1 to stop. I'm giving the user the option to get out of this loop. You'll see in a moment. So let's suppose that the user has entered a valid mark. We then convert that into an integer using the cint function. I do a little test here to ask if the user has entered minus 1 
in which case I will exit the do loop. Exit do. That's a forced exit from a loop. If the user decides to continue, we take that mark, divide it by 80, multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And that's being output. So that's the first student dealt with. Then the outer loop runs again and we prompt for the next student. It's worth typing up this program yourself and stepping through it and you'll see why I've done this. It's important that each time I pass through the loop I reset that variable to a blank string or it's going to hold on to the previous mark and we won't enter this loop. As I say, step through it and you'll see what I mean. So let's see what happens with this program. How many students? Three. Enter the mark for student one. This student scored half marks, which is 50%. Enter the mark for student two. This student didn't do very well. He scored 30 out of 80, which is 37.5%. And this student scored full marks, which of course is 100% and my program ends. But let's see how the validation is working. I run it again, how many students? I have to say how many students. Okay, I want five students please. It's asking for the mark for student one and it keeps on asking until I type something which is valid. Another student with half marks. 50%. Now I'm being asked for the mark for student 2, but you know what, I've changed my mind. I don't want to continue, so a minus 1 will get me out. So there you go, a couple of practical examples of using do loops, and later you'll see just how powerful they can be.